Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video, we're going to be doing part two of the tree body problem written by Liu Shijin. There will be a link to part one in the upper right corner. Before we begin, do me a favor, subscribe, drop us a like, give us a comment, and let's get on with it. Wang logged in to the tree body game starting the second level. The one constant was the pyramid and it was still there. This time it looked like an Egyptian pyramid. This time the people in the game were dressed as Europeans from the 16th or 17th century. The two people he met in the game were John Van Neumann and Isaac Newton. Wang quickly figured out that Van Neumann must be a real person in the game and Isaac Newton must be a program. Newman would use the 30 million people to form a human computer to help calculate the movements of the suns. Using three people at a time, he created an AND gate, then an OR gate, then an N AND gate, N OR gate, X OR gate, X NOR gate, and finally a NOT gate. But the game ended when the three suns rose and lined up behind each other, which in turn affected the gravity of the planet. The end game text appeared and said, Civilization number 184 was destroyed by the stacked gravitational attractions of a trisolar syzygy. This civilization had advanced to the scientific revolution and the industrial revolution. In this civilization, Newton established non-relativistic classical mechanics. At the same time, due to the invention of calculus, the von Neumann architecture computer, the foundation was set for the quantitative mathematical analysis of the motion of three bodies. After a long time, life and civilization will begin once more and progress through the unpredictable world of three body. We invite you to log on again. Once Wang had logged out of the game, he got a phone call from a man who claimed he was the system administrator for the tree body game. The man wanted his age, education, employer, and position. And he said, when you reach this level, you must provide these pieces of information. If you refuse, the tree body will be permanently closed to you. Wang provided the information and a man told him that tomorrow night there will be a meetup for three body players. We welcome you to attend. And the man gave him the address. When Wang got to the meetup, there were seven players in total, including himself. And the meetup organizer turned out to be Pan Han. Wang quickly texted that information to Captain Chi. While they were talking, Wang realized that the three body game progressed independently for each player because one player mentioned that she has been through 203 civilizations, but Wang has only been through 184. Pan Han told them that the world of Trisolaris, or the world of Tree Body, is real, that it does exist. When he was asked where it was, he refused to tell them. He also said that the Trisolarans do dehydrate and rehydrate just as the game says. He also told them that the computer in the game that was formed by humans is real. It is a Trisolaran information computer. The bodies of the Trisolarans who form the computer are covered by a reflective surface. The mirror-like surface can be deformed into any shape and they communicate it with each other by focusing light with their bodies. So while it is still an inefficient machine, it is still capable of completing calculations that are too difficult to be performed manually. He also told them that the existence of the three suns are real. He then said that the goal of tree body is very simple and pure to gather those of us who have common ideals. So Wang asked, what ideals do we have in common? And that's when Pan asked, how would you feel if Trisolaran civilization were to enter our world? Pan listened as the seven discussed what he asked. Then, he then ejected the two that suggested caution in meeting the Trisolarans. To the other five, he said, we are comrades. The fifth time Wang entered the game, this time it was different. The pyramid was gone. In its place was a tall building that looked like the United Nations headquarters. There were many other tall buildings nearby that were dehydratories, but all of them had reflective mirror surfaces. He watched as a giant moon rose and set. 
The first person he met was Einstein sitting on the steps of the UN building. Sometime in the past, Civilization 191 had been destroyed when the three suns flew by the planet at close range. The three suns ripped the planet in two and that's where the new moon came from. This time it took 90 million years for civilization to return. And they have discovered that in the distant past, the Trisolaran star system had 12 planets. Now only one remains. That means the other 11 were consumed by the three suns. After explaining that the three body problem has no solution, the end game text appeared saying, 451 years later, Civilization 192 was destroyed by the fiery flames of twin suns appearing together. It had reached the Atomic Age and the Information Age. Civilization 192 was a milestone in Trisolaran civilization. It finally proved that the tree body problem had no solution. It gave up the useless effort that had already lasted through 191 cycles and set the course for future civilizations. Thus, the goal of tree body had changed. The new goal is head for the stars, find a new home. We invite you to log in again. After Wang logged out, he only rested half an hour before logging in again. And this time, the text said, the situation is urgent. The three body servers are about to be shut down. Please log on freely during the remaining time. Three body will now go directly to the final scene. Wang logged in once again to the game, but this time there was no pyramid, there was no United Nations headquarters, there was no there was no buildings to be seen. Instead, all he saw from where he stood was people. It seems as if all the people on the planet was gathered there and they were staring in the sky. They were watching the Trisolaran interstellar fleet that was about to begin its expedition. The ships would reach one-tenth the speed of light. The fleet was headed to the closest star to the Trisolaran system, a star with planets four light years away. So in about four to five hundred years, the descendants of the people watching the fleet leave would begin a new life for the Trisolarian civilization. Then he saw the endgame text appear. The Trisolaran expedition to the new world has begun. The fleet is still in flight. Tree body is over. When you have returned to the real world, if you remain true to the promise you made, please attend the meetup of the Earth Trisolaris organization. The address will be in a follow-up email you receive. In this meetup, there were a lot more people, about 300 people, and they met in the cafeteria of a chemical plant that was about to be demolished. There was a man there questioning Pan Han. He asked Pan Han, did you murder comrade Shen Yufei? Pan Han said yes. It's because the Adventists have traitors like her in our midst and the organization faces the crisis it does today. The man asked him who gave you the right to kill. He said, I did it out of a sense of duty to the organization. The man then accused him of using their Lord's technology and predictions to gain riches and fame for himself. And Pan Han said, to his eyes, the entire human race is a pile of garbage. It seems that Pan Han is in charge of the environmental branch of that organization and should be creating environmental disasters and then exploiting them. But instead, he wants to prepare for the war against the governments of the earth. And he feels that the redemptionists in the organization will side with the government so that their first priority should be to purge the redemptionists from the organization. He's told that's not within his authority. He says, of course, he knows the commander is the one to decide, but he believes the commander is an Adventist. The man challenging him does not believe him. He says, if the commander was really an Adventist, then the redemptionists would have been purged long ago. Then the commander of the organization appeared before them, and it was Yi Wenjie. The first thing she says is eliminate human tyranny. And the crowd responded, the world belongs to the Trisolaris. Apparently, Pan Han had gone to kill Wei Cheng, Shen Yufei's husband. But 
Instead, he went and he killed Shen Yufei instead. That's when a man from Israel named Raphael stepped forward to say that the human species is an evil species. The human civilization has committed unforgivable crimes against Earth and must be punished. The ultimate goal of the Adventists is to ask our Lord to carry out this divine punishment, the destruction of all humankind. He goes on to say it's a lifelong dream of Mike Evans, the mastermind behind the Adventists. He lied to the organization, fooled everyone, including the commander. Evans had been working towards his goal from the very start. He turned the Adventists into a kingdom of terror populated by extreme environmentalists and madmen who hate the human race. Yi then accused Pan and the Adventists of monopolizing all the communications between their lord and the organization. She goes on to say that they intercepted messages from our Lord to the organization and passed on only a small portion of them, even those you distorted. Also, though the second Red Coast base, you sent a large amount of information to our Lord without the organization's approval. She then said Mike Evans had sent Pan to kill two people, not just one. She then had one of her bodyguards, a young woman, break Pan's neck. She then acknowledged Wang, asking him how has he been, and she introduced him, saying this is Professor Wang, a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and my friend. He researches nanomaterials. This is the first technology our Lord wishes to extinguish from the Earth. She then told Wang that she would continue the story of the Red Coast from the last time she was telling him. She said the comrades here can listen too. It is not a waste of time. This is an extraordinary moment, a fine time to review the history of our organization. He asked her, you weren't done? And she said, no, I've only just started. Yi, working at the Red Coast base, discovered that there were certain frequencies in the sun that allowed it to reflect radiation coming from the lower frequency side and amplify it. The sun was an amplifier for radio waves but it only amplified radio waves that were beyond a certain threshold. And the Red Coast maximum transmission power was one that exceeded that threshold. But that meant that humans could use the sun as a super antenna and broadcast radio waves to the universe. Earth civilization had found a way to transmit at the level of a Karajev type two civilization. He wanted to use the sun to transmit radio waves, but she couldn't tell the base leadership what she wanted to do. So she told them she wanted to use the solar exploration radar to obtain information about solar radiation. Of course, she was denied permission. So what she did was to use one of the test transmissions that are done after an overhaul to conduct her secret test. So she managed to do her transmission and then she went to Chief Yang to get him to begin monitoring the 12,000 megahertz channel. When she did not receive anything, she thought she had failed and was disappointed. But what she didn't know was that her signal she beamed at the sun was leaving the solar system at the speed of light. And at the frequency of 12,000 megahertz, the sun was the brightest star in the entire Milky Way. Sometime in 1973, Yi married Yang. He loved her. She didn't love him. She married him out of gratitude. Without his help, she probably would have died in prison. By this time, Yi basically thought that the human species was insane. One day while Yi was on duty, she received an answer to the transmission that she had sent out eight years before. And it was a warning that said, do not answer, do not answer, do not answer. This world has received your message. I am a pacifist in this world. It is the luck of your civilization that I am the first to receive your message. I am warning you, do not answer, do not answer, do not answer. There are tens of millions of stars in your direction. As long as you do not answer, this world will not be able to ascertain the source of your transmission. But if you answer, the source will be located right away. Your planet will be invaded. Your world will be conquered. Do not answer. Do not answer. Do not answer. 
he knew that because of the length of time between the transmission of her message and the receipt of this one, that the source must be around four light years away. That could only come from one place, Alpha Centauri. Over the next four hours, she began to decipher the messages coming in. She learned of the Trisolaris. She learned of the civilization that has been reborn again and again. She learned of their plan to migrate to the stars. He made sure that no one was watching. Then she put all the messages that she received in a multiple encrypted invisible subdirectory. Then she copied over the segment of noise received a year ago as a substitute for the transmission. He then went to the transmission section and she composed the message and sent it out. Come here, I will help you conquer this world. Our civilization is no longer capable of solving its own problems. We need your force to intervene. As she was walking back to the control room, she fainted. When she woke up, her doctor told her that she was pregnant. When he finished speaking about her time at the Red Coast base, Wang asked her how did the ETO get started. ETO stands for Earth Trisolaris Organization. But she put that off, instead wanting to speak to him about his nanomaterial project. When he asked her why is this law that she speaks about so afraid of the nanomaterial, she says because it will allow humans to escape gravity and engage in space construction at a much larger scale, meaning it could help Earth develop a space elevator. She goes on to say that with this technology, humans could easily enter near Earth space and build up large-scale defensive structures. So this technology must be extinguished. He pointed out to her that what he's doing is not basic research, that someone else will figure out the rest. She agreed, saying it is far more effective to confuse the researcher's mind. But as you point out, we didn't stop the progress in time. He says that their technique is far more effective against basic research. That's when he asked her how did her daughter die. She didn't answer that, but that's when the army broke into the room. Following the soldiers in was Captain Shi. Captain Shi then demanded that they drop their weapons onto the table. I swear I'm going to kill the next son of a bitch who tries anything. I know that none of you is afraid to die, but we are not afraid either. I'm going to say this up front. Normal police procedures and laws don't apply to you. Even the human law of warfare no longer apply to you. Since you've decided to treat the entire human race as your enemy, there's no longer anything we wouldn't do to you. Then three people came out of the crowd, ran up to the floating tree body sculpture and grabbed one each. The young woman who killed Pan Han was one of them. And she says, officers, we hold in our hands three nuclear bombs, each with a yield of about 1.5 kilotons. Not too big, this is the detonator. She said, our demand is simple. Let the commander go, then we can play whatever game you want. Yi then said, I will stay with my comrades. She then had a explosive expert confirm her claim. It turns out that the one that the girl was holding was a nuclear bomb. That's when the explosive expert whispered to Captain Shi, shoot the sphere. The conventional explosives around the outside will go off, but the explosion will be scattered. It won't lead to the kind of precise compression of a fission material in the center necessary for a nuclear explosion. Captain Shi walked up to the young woman and said, I have some information. Your mother has been found. When he was about five meters from her, he pulled an envelope out of his pocket. One of the other two threw away their fake bombs and came to him to get the envelope. That's when he drew his gun and shot the bomb in her hands, which exploded. Chaos ensued, and more than a dozen ETO fighters were killed. The rest, more than 200, including Yi Wenjie, were arrested. Wang then told Shi, while they were in the ambulance, that he was right. Someone really was behind it. She then told Wang that he was the one that was right. I would never have thought that actual aliens would be involved. They began interrogating Yi Wenjie. They told her that she was suspected of murder while she was working at the Red Coast base. She admitted that she killed two people. 
They asked her when. She said the afternoon of October 21st, 1979. The two people she killed were Commissioner Le Ji Sheng and her husband, base engineer Yang Wei Ning. And then she continued her story. She said that on the day she received the extraterrestrial communication and replied, she learned that she wasn't the only one to get the message. Le did also. It turns out that Commissioner Le had a program running in the background of the computer that read and copied and stored in a hidden file every transmission that the Red Coast sent and received that only he could read. And that's how he discovered the transmissions from Yi to and from the aliens. When he challenged her, she realized that he didn't know that she had sent a answer to the aliens. She didn't use the regular file interface when she sent her answer, so that got around his monitoring program. But he knew that she was planning to reply, and he felt that if she did, she would ruin all human civilization. He told her they will keep it quiet because he didn't want to ruin her husband along with her, but she knew that he wanted to take credit for discovering extraterrestrial intelligence. So she sabotaged the transmission knowing that the commissar would be one of those to volunteer to repel down the cliff to look for the problem. What she didn't count on was that her husband Yang showed up and insisted on going down and helping the commissar using the same rope. So she had no choice but to kill both of them. The interrogator then had her sign the record of her admitting to murder. We'll stop here. The third part of this book will be in an upcoming video. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe, give us a like, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.